I wanted to come back to, to corporate in a way that I could, really could help develop people so they could navigate in, in anxiety and ambiguity and really uh, tap into their potential. I mean, there's there's wonderful professional development folks out there, and I just wanted to to see, you know, what kind of lens could I bring, how I could blend my business background to that, um, and and how could I really uh, celebrate our all of our, like, the humanistic part of us. I think sometimes we get very prescribed in uh, certain methodologies or frameworks and we forget about the individual actually. Working with. Right. Um, so, so in the research, actually it was in my mindfulness research that I came to the point of like, oh, can you be curious and anxious all at the same time? And maybe I had something there. Uh, that was incredibly naive because there is uh, anxiety and curiosity. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, it led me on this really interesting journey into the world of curiosity. And curiosity in the workplace has only probably really been studied, I would say, in the last 10, 15 years. There are wonderful, eminent curiosity researchers out there who I would not be here today if it wasn't for, for their work. And they continue to do really amazing work. Uh, but I also knew that I didn't want to stay so academic and never take the work back into pra practical application. For me, the, the academic part was so I could have evidence-based tools to use into my practice to take to people. Mm. Um, and so my, my doctoral research was studying curiosity of executives across a number of different industries and, and how that manifested in them uh, physically, emotionally, uh, mentally spatially, temporally, uh, and try to figure out, you know, what, what really happens when we're curious, because if we can figure that out, maybe we can figure out how to enliven that and use it in a way that really could serve us. Uh, because as we get older, you know, we tend to conform uh, to certain beliefs and, and experiences, just like I did through my trajectory, and our curiosity might start getting stifled or tucked away, and, and then, you know, we might not be as fulfilled or in the right, in the right lane or whatever it is, you know? Um, so makes, that's how I came to curiosity and, it, and bringing that work to the, to organizations. It makes perfect sense to me. It sounds very exciting because during trauma, they say, or, you know, when something happens, they say, ask yourself empowering questions. I mean, of course, deal with the crap that's going on in your life, but ask empowering questions. One of the most powerful, pow empowering questions is what, you know, let's get curious about something, you know, even at, from a, from a stand-up comedy or an acting, you know, which is my background, when you have anxiety and you have to do an audition, you get selflessly involved and you get curious about your surroundings. Then you do a personal inventory of when you get, and you get selflessly involved in curiosity. Not one is you're not inside yourself. That's one. But most importantly, from your standpoint is that you're talking now talking about opening up your creative mind for possibilities as opposed to getting so in the weeds and linear, you're expanding out, which is a higher level of consciousness for an executive. That's kind of like what the bigger guys do. Me being a, still a student of, you know, being a small business, you know, but you're on a corporate level from what I've studied, you know, listening to, you know, some big executives, big companies that are working from a high level of consciousness in business wise, they're, they're, they're usually, you know, um, have a level of, 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 you know, it's all cerebral, you know, as opposed to mechanics. Yeah. I think, you know, we also have a very, um, linear view of curiosity. It's, it's I, I appreciate people focus on the inquisitiveness of it. Uh, what we're finding is that it's, it's richer than that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's multidimensional. So there's an element of not knowing, there's an element of exploration, there's an element of openness, and there is an element of stress tolerance. So if we can learn how to manage the anxiety, doubt, or stress as we are exploring, then we're likely to build our resilience going forward. Mm. So, and anybody can do this. Uh, and it's true, there, you know, I, curiosity is innate in all of us, so it's not reserved for the the, just the senior corporate executives, it's, you know, everybody has this within them. Uh, it just, it just needs some intentionality and these intentionality. I mean, the best way I can say is it, it needs intention and attention. Mm -hmm. 
So you do choose to be curious. It is up to you. It's, it is self-directed. This is all documented in the research. And I love what you said about, you know, opening yourself up to possibilities. The invitation is if you can uh, admit you don't know something and then have, and then go explore and be open to what's coming in, then it, then you can be um, experiencing new reference points mm. that broaden your ways of thinking and viewing the world, which then builds your stress tolerance. So um, we have to engage in the unfamiliar, uncertain, and the new, because that's the only way you're going to get these experiences. And I'm not saying it's always pleasant, because I know firsthand it's not. And certainly... Um, the way, the way to growth is to get uncomfortable. I mean, there is no growth in comfort. You just, you can't. I'm sorry. Mm. I know. Darn it. I wish, I wish that wasn't the case. You can do some things, but, but it's, it's inevitable. And maybe you can <laughs> have different, attach different associations towards that pain. But it's something that, you know, it can be uncomfortable for sure. <laughs> yeah. 